right so let's we go and do a small exercise um okay this goes actually a little bit deeper on the hardware but on the other hand well so does the first exercises if you go and take a look at the cisco they will also go through that one we 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 just show this this a little bit uh, as a teaser the how to draw your own circuit schematics and how to make design a small printed circuit board and in this particular exercise you will design your own arduino shield arduino shields are the add-on boards that actually go on the top of the Arduino, the, the, uh, that circuit. And you just plug it in there and then up, download the program and that's it. And for exercise purpose, we just make a simple switching transistor application which already have been tested on the Tinkercad simulator. So the last week's exercise seven uh, was the average current, the controller. And this actually will be now turned into a, a shield, plug in shield. And why we are doing this, why you should care anything about building electronics there are electronics engineers in the world who do this yes they are they do excellent job and if you go into some company in finland which still makes their own electronics like vaisala or there are also some others but vaisala is the big, i think the biggest one who is still uh, designing their own electronics. The electronic engineers are actually pretty uh, well occupied people. So if you happen to be in a small project and you just need a simple small circuit board so that you can start testing, for example, a sensor, a plug-in board for some microcontroller environment that you want to actually test. Then you would do a very small, this interfacing board, solder that small component there, and then just, you know, plug it in and start doing the your program without waiting for a couple of weeks of time for that electronics engineer to have time from other projects to make that five minute thing. Okay, so in that sense, uh, all of you actually will need this, need, need to know how to do it, especially the IoT engineers, oh, no, sorry, smart systems engineers, especially you guys. And yes, also the IoT engineers, if you are going to put a sensor on, inter, uh, the, on, the, on the network, you need this information too. Um, since you will be working on hopefully Finnish industry, I don't mind also other European industry, but you're, you're designing things uh, which are connected uh, between, you know, things. And uh, they are not found yet. Otherwise, you would be de developing those. So lots of European and Finnish companies are creating these things. So if you get lucky, you really get into one of those companies and uh, Basically, uh, you are designing uh, things that will be off the shelves. So, oh, so basically, you just go and buy them. But you will be working on 
the, those devices before they, you can buy them, hopefully. Okay, so in that sense, you need to also at least uh, understand how to read the schematics, but also you need to make be able to make small schematics. Another one, then the uh, the the, the uh, part is that you will be designing small printer circuit boards. And yes, it is a job for a professional electronics engineers, which are basically backpacked with a lots of lots of work. Okay, uh, some of you may actually find electronics interesting hobby. There are plenty of good tools, electronic CAD tools which are available for free. In this exercise, we will be using ECEDA online software, just because you do not need to install anything and you may create an anonymous email address to register it for short time. So it just requires one email that you can actually uh, the, the, uh, uh, just click the link that ECEDA is sending you, and that's it. And basically, this this uh, uh, this exercise is pretty short. You, oh, actually, uh, I also took took a look at this uh, software. I wouldn't. I would actually trust that company quite a lot, so because they're. Um, they are getting money for actually with the links to some component distributor and PCB distributor. So they, if there is some money flow involved, then those basically the uh, company goes bankrupt if they don't care about the safety and security of, uh, and privacy issues. Anyways, so instructions, how to use ECEDA, here's a link. So register using your email address of your choice. It's up to you to decide which way. Or if you are already familiar with some other electronics CAD program, then please use that. That's the easiest way for you. You don't need to learn just another the uh, electronic CAD program. So, but anyways, register your choice. Metropoly account. Well, it's study related stuff, so Metropoly account is pretty good in that sense. So you know that okay, two weeks after you have graduated, you don't have that account anymore. <laughs> no email is coming to you. No spam. Uh, then another one, of course, Google is the easiest way to log in. There is the direct Google. You can actually log in as a Facebook and uh, and 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 some other those most common login methods they have. Or use an anonymous email address. I used this time the drop mail for my account. Let's see if my Google Chrome still remembers me. Ah, yes, it actually remembers still me. Okay, <clears throat> so maybe I should give you some time to log into that system or actually you can I will just give you the show, then we will have a short break. And basically after that, I will be hanging around the line in case you have any questions. I can actually show you how to how things, things are done. But anyways, so after the, the uh, registering, logging, then under products, there's online editor. So here, oops. Hmm. 
oh boy. Oh, come, this is so slow, sluggish. Online editor. And it should looks like that. <clears throat> so practically here, I already tested that it works here. So I am my own uh, project already there, but I can go and create a new project here, I think. Uh -huh. <laughs> Oh, there, new project. But we have before clicking, look also here on the messages. It will have the same standard messages. Uh, they are easy ADA tutorial video, and then there's easy ADA tutorials.pdfs that actually gives you some pointers how to use, what, what kind of things you can do. Uh, okay, that kind of stuff. So there's more help. There's even forum explore. And okay, for the uh, if you need some parts, actually you can go to this uh, uh, LCSC parts. You can order parts from here, and then you can order PCBs from there. Ha! Huh. Great. So basically, there is a way they are getting. So nothing is free in the world. If you have a nice uh, tool, somebody's paying it. You are paying it, of course, when you are ordering components using this system and these printed circuit boards. Okay, good. So, um, I'm drawing a circuit diagram. <laughs> That's the circuit diagram you will be doing. I'll be getting back to it. So creating a new project. Let's see, did it click it? Now it clicks it. New title for the project would be just to show. Just to show. That sounds like a good And by the way, this also supports team editing. So this is actually a pretty good uh, electronic SCAD program. In here, um, maybe I should now also expand that view a little bit. Oh well, on the other end, it also will be high quality on YouTube. But anyways, now we have the master and it has one schematic on it. Okay, so this is the schematic not saved yet. If we click save, we have one sheet of schematic on our project. And this is where you put your schematic drawing. Uh, where to get the components. Um, you can get them from the, this lib library. Okay. Works just fine. Uh, there are some the, the, uh, uh, surface mount devices here, both US and EU. Markings, and then there are some inductors, that kind of stuff. Doesn't too much. It doesn't look too much. There are displays, LCDs, that kind of stuff. But actually, it also had a nice library. So, for example, if you want to find a part from library, for example, a resistor. 
task search those and actually okay you can actually click that one so it'll csc electronics meaning that you see the library hey wait a minute they should post more resistors than that just that the library components which are found from the part supplier huh that's funny Resistors. Ha! Huh. That was strange. The uh, search didn't work too well. But any, anyways, for example, the um, carbon film resistors. Different types. Uh, that's a... Oh! Did it... Okay, did my no? Actually, I'm seeing the. Uh... Wait a minute. Ah, Zoom session just froze up. <laughs> oh, great! The Zoom. Okay, so again, the zoom froze up. I, I had to restart the zoom. Okay, great. Now, I think now you see me again and hear me again. That's fine. Ha! This is very strange. Anyways, so uh, you you actually saw this one, right? The exercise sheet. Yeah, okay. Uh, did you see it up here or something like that? Okay, good, good. Okay, nothing after that. So you didn't see the ECEDA. Okay. <laughs> All right, great. Let me close that one and show you show you that one so that you can actually see it. Uh, it will be actually on the recording, but anyways, anyways, then let's let's. Um, so practically, you just follow the instructions here. Start the ECEDA. There is actually also a link to a pretty nice tutorial. It's from Learn Robotics, and they basically have a pretty nice tutorial on how to use the CDA. Okay, and let's see. Oops. At some point, you will be. This is the exercise. Actually, you will be making this board on CDA. I'll show you. Basically, a few tips how to use this uh, schematic editor and then how to use the uh, PCB editor. So, on the easy EDA, when it starts, let me go to the uh, main page here. And did that actually? Okay, there. Good. So that's what it looks like, the ECEDA on the beginning. So under products, you have online editor. After you have registered and logged in as a user. Clicking that. Does that one actually break my connection? I see there's no picture on the zoom yet 
just a little bit of latency, something like 10 seconds of latency of the picture. Okay, so starting, let me start again. So new project, project title will be a new test. You could also put the description there, but anyways. Okay, this is schematic sheet. And why it looks like this one? They used to be just drawings. This is a technical drawing. It has a format. There's a title. Title for it. Company. Your logo could, could go there and who was doing it and the date. So the typical for tech, any technical drawing. And basically, when you save this one, it will appear as the uh, sheet one on your design, your project design. Okay, how to get components here? Let's put a, um, let's do something simple like RC low pass filter with input and output. So basically take the uh, components from the library here and on the library ah let's see libraries formats ha huh. why doesn't it give me the library here strange Try to find something. Oh, okay, now it has the uh, library here. Resistor. Okay, I will close the other. Hmm, strange. For example, take the carbon film resistors here. And now I have different size resistors. For example, I could actually find by the resistance, but anyways, that's my favorite, 10 kilometers. So if you want to find some certain uh, size resistor, then you would say, I think something like 10 kilo ohm. Let's see, does it work? Also that way, yeah. 10 kilo ohm resistors, different types. For example, that one quarter watt 10 kilo ohm resistor, which has this schematic symbol like that. Middle picture is what it looks like on the printer circuit board. And then bottom is a picture what it looks like in real life. Let's place that one somewhere. Let's start with the middle. Then you, if you have all of the same size, or yeah, the same size, then you can actually uh, just click as many as you wish. And then let's put here a, okay, library. Let's put, uh, say 10 microfarads. That's electrolytic. Um, let's see something else. That's also electrolytic. Yeah, still electrolytic. Yeah, that's something else. Okay. There we go. And just put that one there. If you want to expand it just 
roll of the mice or I think it's plus minus. And then if you want to rotate it, it's the right, I think it's on the um, right button. No, it's not. Okay, let's see. Is it uh, letter R? Yes, letter R actually rotates a component. There, I have a resistor and capacitor. How to make a connection? Here we have wiring tools, wire from this terminal, okay, make it neat, to that terminal. Now I have connected those. Next, for example, putting a the uh, ground here. I can actually wire all sorts things like this, so you just connect those together. And then if you want to move them apart, you would just click it like that, drag it on another place, it adds the wire in between. So that's one fast way of connecting also the components. Okay, then I need a connector. So this is a real circuit board. I could actually use just these this, this kind of say uh, terminals here, but I want to have a connector. And connectors we have plenty. I will write two pin connectors. Okay, no. Um, ah. Nope. Sorry about that. Usually it works like that. So let me just find it from the, uh, oops, from here. Um, da, 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 da. Screw the terminal. That'll be nice. Screw terminal. See what do I do? That's three pin, three pin. That's two pin, for example. It has the two P there. Okay, that'll do. That's a two pin connector with screw terminals. So they basically they are. That's a tiny, tiny picture. Let's see if it actually shows the one bigger one. Does it show any bigger ones? No. Oh, it actually opens up here uh, this <laughs> page which has all the information. That's really nice. And here you go. You can see it has the screw slot. So you just put the wires there and, you know, tighten it with the screw. Excellent. So that'll do. I will place two of those here. So one for the out input and another one for the output. So for example, input left, output right. Then I can actually swap that one, mirror this so that it actually from the terminals are like this one. And again, few wires, wiring input here wiring output there, then have the common ground connection. And here we have the RC low pass filter. And I can save that one. If you need to change the component values, you need to find it the the uh, the uh, from the library again then you can actually the easiest way from the beginning is to just add the new component uh, the better component and then just redo the wirings and uh, positioning of this of the uh, these um, parts okay but anyways RC low pass filter with uh, 
input as a screw terminal, output also as a screw terminal, so you can actually put wires there and just resistor and capacitor in between. And that's already saved. Good. That's schematic. So in principle, everything, uh, the, the exercise what we have here, it's just bigger. It's nothing more than just bigger. It has these components, component values a little bit tweaked again. Um, and then it basically also, this is what I do in real life. Although with this small uh, electronics, I would just think of this on my head, but you know, bigger, uh, bigger these, these uh, schematics, I will take pen and start marking things changes. So for example here PWN input is from Arduino D13. I want analog zero line to that point meaning measuring the peak current and analog one uh, input would come from for the uh, this low pass filtered monitoring signal. Okay, uh, and don't worry about the exercise too much. I already found you good components for it. For example, if you want to um, find that this this um, one ohm uh, resistor withstanding half a watt of power. You can find it yourself from the library. Let's paste that one. Yep, perfect match. One ohm stunt, uh, shunt resistor. Good. What is also nice, actually, I will just show you, show you. So there's also a component called Arduino R3 Shield, which is really nice if you want to the uh, design a this 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 um, your own shield library. There we go, shield. Either with with labels or no labels. Well, let's put it with no labels. Okay, it gives you the schematic symbol is just like any, say, microcontroller or so. But it also had this mechanical drawing for the PCB. Okay, let me. I'll show you that later. So, but anyway, so, so there is a component that you can use directly just by putting it there. All right, so let's uh, think that, okay, this is our schematic and we want to do a printed circuit board, uh, which is not too hard. You just select convert to PCB. Click. There we go. Now it actually created a printed circuit board with two copper layers, that's fine. That's the most common. Rectangular, it also has the dimensions here. <clears throat> and units, we are in Europe, it's millimeters. Did I click cancel? No, I actually didn't. And then you may need to actually find the perp circuit board. These are the components and this is the circuit board. So basically you just need to move these components and place them inside of that circuit board. 
first, as you can see, there are these dynamic kind of uh, wires, the connections. They are not uh, any copper wires yet. They are just dynamic connections. That's my input. Let me just put, put it here for a while and then take the other one there and start moving these things around. Um, one nice tool is here, fit in window. So it gives you the nice look at it. And again, uh, selecting a component and pressing R actually uh, rotates it. And let me rotate a couple of times more. There. Another component. Okay. There we go. Another uh, terminal. And practically that's all you need to do yourself. If you, this is your first uh, the, the circuit board ever, what you need to do is to create schematic, click on the convert to PCB, then you, on the PCB, you uh, position these components, then you can actually also adjust this um, the uh, circuit board outline a bit if you want to. Uh -huh. Oops, not like that. I need. To, I, I think I do. You need to make it actually. Uh, I think grab it from the corner. Let's see what happens if I. Oh wow. <laughs> Oh, that was strange. That was really strange. I think you need, you can actually just move those from the corner. Try to keep the corner intact. If you want to change the, the size of, or if you want to also to change the shape, you can actually do something like this. like that. Right. Adjust the uh, uh, position, adjust this um, circuit board. Let's save this. Next would be to do routing, meaning that actually uh, you will put, uh, change those dynamic connections to copper traces. And that happens easiest by clicking the auto router. For the beginner, that's actually something that I always recommend. Use the auto router if it's available, especially if you are ICT engineer, not electronics engineer. It does not need to be pretty. It just need to work. So clicking auto router. Some you can change these uh, if you want to, but usually those are pretty good for manufacturing sense. Um, uses cloud converter, yeah. Router layers. Uh, if this was a single sided board or if you want to you can actually then uh, for these components all the components are true hole components then the routing should be done so that you have bot you're using only bottom layer but on the other hand if you are getting the circ printed circuit board uh, uh, commercially then actually just all layers and click run. Okay, auto router is running. 0% done. <laughs> Yesterday it was actually pretty fast. Okay. It 
looks like maybe there are some other users there. Okay, it's done there. Okay, there we go. Ha, it made the uh, routings mostly using the top layer. It's just fine for commercially available uh, the, the, uh, the, the printer circuit boards, which has a true coppered the, uh, these holes. If you use a circuit mill for manufacturing board, then you can actually solder only uh, the uh, these components from the bottom side, which means that this copper should be mostly on the bottom side. But anyways, it works. Believe me, this would work just fine. Uh, saving it and then we can take a look, look at what it looks like in 2D view. Mm -hmm. Okay. When it comes out from the factory it looks like that. It has these lighter layers which are the, 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 actually there's a lacquer, insulation lacquer uh, in top of these copper wires. That's the uh, Top side, bottom side. Okay, looks just fine. And you even have these markings of this is U1 and this is U2. The, the, uh, that's a seal screen, meaning those would be coming out from the factory as white uh, lines, markings. Um, yeah, sure. That's a photo view. Okay. We are living in 3D world if you want to basically see what it would look like. Uh, then if these all of these components would have the 3D model, it would show also those here. Okay, well this one actually is handy. This is actually quite nice if you want to do the electronics enclosure yourself using some 3D design program. But ICT engineers, mm, I would guess it's better to just buy those enclosures from a shop and uh, or get somebody, some professional to design that mechanical enclosure. But anyhow, uh, you need to be able to do it up to this kind of design because all the electronic engineers are actually working on some other projects and you need only this small piece. I'm just quickly show you the, um, did I actually try that myself? Oh, yep, I think I did. So your printed circuit board form For this uh, exercise, it would look something like this. So, if you take a look at this um, design, there is that shield model here with the, all these connections, the connectors here. All the connectors are terminals. It also has the uh, dimensions there. And you can then make the circuit board so that it uh, this actually fits more or less inside of that <coughs> of that the uh, of your circuit board. So this purple line, thin purple line, means the circuit board dimension. And if you want to, you can actually uh, go and do the corners also so that it fits exactly those dimensions, the circuit board dimensions, same as the uh, these um, model dimensions, that that will be just, this kind of circuit board would be just fine. It has all the uh, connections. Okay, where are the connections? Actually, I made the connections on the bottom side only. 
all the connections on the bottom side. I know I'm old, old, old school guy. Um, I was taught that way. If you can fit everything on the bottom side, use it. Um, then on the top side, I have only these components, which has the uh, these uh, these models. And uh, pay attention to the to this um, screw terminal. All of these. Um, terminals and connectors and that kind of things which where you need to access yourself put those on the sides of these next to the corner of the printed circuit board okay good so um everything started from oops <laughs> from registering yourself there, taking the online editor, opening the online editor there, which gave you the, the uh, oh, where is the online, okay, it's open it here. Good, online editor that you can start adding components from library. Then basically after you have done the schematic by connecting with the wiring tool, you connect these uh, wires. Um, connecting the wires and then when you have finished with the wiring and all the components, then you would go and start converting to PCB. By the way, if you make any changes here, then you need to update that PCB separately. So it does not automatically go there. These are uh, used to be quite heavy uh, programs, but nowadays, of course, the, 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 the computers, they are designed for game use. The games require much more the, the intensive graphics than these CAD programs. But anyways, they used to be uh, quite, of, say, slow to use if you keep those updating all the time. So that, in that reason, you just update it when you have done some real changes here, then update it by saying update PCB. Not too, too complicated <laughs> for an old guy like me. And yeah then you just position the components find nice places hit auto router oh actually before hitting the auto router you better to uh, you better change this um, if needed change the um, change that the dimensions and adding a corner point actually you just drag a middle point then you can start positioning these like this you can make different shape boards quite easily okay when happy with your mechanical design you use auto router to get the connections there. And that's it. What you need to do for the exercise, you need to actually do the schematic first. And schematic, let's see here, the schematic. Just take the uh, copy of that one, the usual way, you know, shift. Or Windows Shift S and there we go. The connections that'll be just fine. Adding that kind of picture in that 
box. And the same thing also for the PCB. It's up to you if you want to show me that PCB or photo view or 3D view. I don't really care <laughs> since all of those will show the positioning of the components. That's the most important part of, 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 the, of doing the uh, printed circuit board design. The most important part of this uh, circuit uh, schematic is to uh, use the correct components and make the correct connections. Okay, good. So that was 101 crash course on making making a uh, your own small printed circuit board from scratch. If you have any questions, now is a good time to ask. Otherwise, uh, I will just hang around until. 12 o'clock or so, just in case you have any questions. So if you start working on the exercise, for example. Okay, I will stop recording.